Shalom, shalom, family, and welcome to our channel, Manna for Battle, where we literally eat spiritual food provided by Yahuwah. And if the food you're eating doesn't look right, doesn't smell right, or doesn't taste right, then most likely you're eating at the wrong table. Join us and eat the spiritual manna straight from Yahuwah that will nourish your earthly body, lead you to Yeshua, who will take you straight to the Heavenly Father and your celestial one. Now let's prepare for battle. Heavenly Father, creator of the heaven and the earth and all that is in them, hear the prayer of your daughter, the child of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father, Forgive our sins and the sins of our ancestors. We have committed great abominations against you. Remove the scales from our eyes that we may see clearly to understand your words as they lead us safely home to you. Selah. Hear the words of the Most High in Leviticus chapter 26 verse 45. But I will for their sakes. Remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt, in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their power. I am the Most High. All praises to the Most High power. Now grab your Bibles and let's prepare for battle. First and foremost, one must understand we are all spiritual beings. As a matter of fact, the Most High has been communicating with many of us since we were born, and we know we are the children of the Most High. But in this physical realm, many do not know their identity other than we were descendants from slaves. And when the Most High said, through His Spirit, Arise, O Israel, we awoke and began our search for our ancestors. Hear the words of the Most High in Job chapter 8, verse 8. For inquire, please, of the former age, and consider the things discovered by their fathers. Our fathers found out there is but one power, the Most High power, and the only way we can be saved from this fallen, demonic, wicked world and return to Him is through Yeshua HaMashiach. Hear the words of the Most High in John chapter 14, verse 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. You see that? Our ancestor Job stated we needed to seek the former age because the descendants of all the nations are still on the earth today. Hear the words of the Most High in Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 16 in part. There is no end of all the people. I'm going to say that again. There is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. This verse alone rings loudly with spiritual overtones. But let me stay focused in the physical realm, okay? Many may not know that there were 70 nations on the earth after the flood, but today there are 195 recognized countries. 193 are members of the UN and two non-members are observer states, the Vatican and Palestine. Regardless of how these nations are camouflaged or how they divided the lands, know this, we all still fall under those ancient 70 nations, and there is a judgment for dividing the Most High's lands. Hear the words of the Most High in Joel chapter 3 verse 2. I will also gather all nations and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat and will plead with them there for my people and my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered among all the nations and parted my land. You see that? But let's search deeper with an overview of Genesis chapter 10, which is also known as the chart or table of the nations. When we ask you to note something, it is just for you to use in your studies, okay? Let's look at verse 2 through 5. 
It reveals Japheth is the father of the Gentile nations. This word Gentile should have been translated to Goyim, but that's for another lesson. Note this, Japheth's son Ashkenaz in verse 3. You see that? Note it. Verse 6 through 20 reveals that Ham is the father of the children of the African nations today. And just so you know, Africa has 54 countries. Hmm. Note verse 8, his son Nimrod. Finally, verses 21 through 31 reveal the children of Shem. Please search your ancestors and his family out during your studies. But for time's sake, note these four things. In verse 21, Eber is a child of Shem. The word Hebrew derives from this ancestor. Japheth is the elder of Noah's three sons. In verse 25, the earth was divided in Peleg's time. And lastly, all these people were on the earth at the time Abraham and his seed were chosen. Also, remember Terah had two other sons who were not chosen, and Lot's seed are Ammon and Moab. Hear the words of the Most High in Genesis chapter 10, verse 32. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. So the earth was divided in three parts relating to Noah's three sons. But let's search deeper in the book of Jubilees, chapter 8, verse 25 and 29 through 30. Japheth's portion was North Asia and Europe. You see that? Verse 29 and 30. This is the land which came forth to Japheth and his sons as the portion of his inheritance, which he should possess for himself and his sons for their generations forever. Five great lands. Note, they probably include also Cyprus, Sicily, Sardinia, Corsica, and a great land in the north. But it is cold, and the land of Ham is hot, and the land of Shem is is neither hot nor cold, but it is blended, cold, and hot. These were the three parts of the earth at that time, Europa, Asia, and Africa. You see that? Many may not know that Noah placed a curse on his sons if they attempted to take their brother's lands, and the brothers agreed to that curse, not only for themselves, but their descendants also. Uh oh. Hear the words of the Most High in Jubilees chapter 9, verses 14 and 15. Noah bound each of his sons to an oath, invoking a curse on everyone that sought to seize the portion which had not fallen to him by his lot, his inheritance. And they all said, So be it, for themselves and their sons forever, throughout their generations, till the day of judgment on which the Lord God shall judge them with a sword and with fire for all the unclean wickedness of their era, wherewith they will fill the earth with transgression and uncleanliness and fornication and sin. You see that? So everyone's forefather on the earth today knew if they took their brother's lands, their descendants' lives were at stake. Now, we all know that Abraham had eight children, his seed. But out of these seed, Isaac was chosen. And from Isaac's seed, Jacob was chosen. And because of this, we say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, not Abraham and Ishmael's seed, or Abraham and Keturah's seed. You see that? For these children were given their blessing and sent away from Isaac. Wait, I thought all nations would be blessed through Abraham's seed. They will be blessed through Yeshua, if it is the Father's will, but that is not what this verse means. Let's search deeper to gain better understanding, but first, remember this, always read the verses before and after to keep things in context. Hear the words of the Most High in Genesis chapter 22 verse 18. 
and your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Hmm. Let's search deeper in the Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, subparagraph B. It reads in the underlined portion, so also should be explained a passage found with slight alterations five times in Genesis. Oh, okay, so this verse was altered five times. Hmm. And in thy seed shall all nations of the earth bless themselves. You see that? They shall pray that the lot, the inheritance, of Israel may be theirs. This applies for Genesis chapter 22 verse 18 and chapter 26 verse 4. But wait, I wonder what the other three say. Hmm. Believe me, family, the nations that stole our inheritance are very aware of what they did and what the curse entails. But let's search a little deeper with a closer look at some of the other biblical interpretations. The NET reads, Because you have obeyed me, all the nations of the earth will pronounce blessings on one another using the name of your descendants. Consider one of Japheth's descendants, Ashkenaz. Remember, he is a Gentile. He is not. Shem's seed in accordance with Genesis chapter 10 verse 3. But let's search a little deeper with a closer look at the International Standard Version summarized. I will cause you to have many descendants and give all these lands to your descendants. Later on through your descendants all the nations of the earth will bless one another. You see that? All nations were blessed through us during slavery. Consider all the years of free labor. When the Most High divided the nations and gave them their lands, he chose a nation for himself in accordance with Deuteronomy chapter 14 verse 2 and set them apart from the other nations to be his own and they are his inheritance even to this day. Hear the words of the Most High in Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 9 and 10 summarized. For the Most High's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in the wilderness and led him about, instructing him and kept him as the apple of his eye. All praises to the Most High power. Stay tuned until the end of the video. We have provided what the Holy Spirit revealed to us about some of the nations. I pray this helps you in your studies and brings you peace. Remember, we must all repent, regardless of what nation we are from, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Shalom family, and thank you. Family. I pray this lesson has edified your soul and spirit and brings you peace. Always, always, always seek Yah first and pray without ceasing. Remember, John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. But the hour cometh, and now it is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. And be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified of my next video. Thank you.